Hey guys, Tony could have been again. Um, so um, I saw game one in the finals. I liked what I saw. Uh, I will say that I had a I had to wait one day because I wanted to process everything that I saw. And uh, I would like to emphasize this is not the Golden State Warriors at their best. As the announcer said that, the analyst said that. Everyone understands this was not them at their best peak performance yet they still won by what 21 points so there's a few plays i want to go over there's I, I singled out nine different plays mostly obviously mostly from the uh the cavalier uh the golden state warrior side because you know i am a fan of steph curry the the greatest shooter of all time the g so but um all right so let's look at some of these plays all right hope you guys can see the screen i'm just gonna play this through right here so what you're seeing right now is you're seeing Clay Thompson. You know, they, they see him on the fast break, they're like, okay, maybe he's about to drive. But Clay Thompson, Clay Thompson, in my opinion, is the X factor, or will be the X factor in this series. The reason being is because he's he's ice cold right now. He's in a shooting slump, not exactly sure what's going on. They're waiting for him to explode. He and that might not come. But like in terms of his defense, people try to justify his his poor offense by saying, you know, he, he's doing really good defense. I agree, he is. But um, is Draymond Green doing better defense? As usual, I would say, yeah, probably. There's there's a reason why Clay Thompson is not considered Defensive Player of the Year. He's not been in the he's not been a candidate. But um, let's see how this plays out. Okay, so so Clay is gonna pass the ball. To the only person not being guarded, so you know his his court vision is still you know he's he's he knows how to play. Clay Thompson, Andre Iguodala, and he's now guarded by Iguodala. So basically, what we saw there was um, the Cavaliers get, giving Clay a little too much credit that he was going to try to score when they probably should have tried to let him score because odds. In terms of the odds, he, he there was a higher chance of him missing that in, than Iguodala dunking and finishing. That's just my opinion, from what I saw, or from what I've seen, what I saw. Okay, now I'm going to point this play out. This play, I believe, is um, it's a, uh, it's when LeBron is open, I believe. Let me just make sure it is. Hold on. Iguodala. James kicks it out to Love. Right back inside. James realizing or not so you understand what happened in that play? Um, that was obviously the Warriors' defense, you know, uh, taking a breather. You know, they were they were caught, you know, being being passive. They were caught being passive, and LeBron gets the easy dunk. So um, I don't know what happened there. I mean, uh, can the Cavs capitalize on the mistakes? That Golden State may or may not make, of course. But you gotta understand that the Warriors already proven they can capitalize on LeBron's mistakes. Eight turnovers, LeBron. Eight turnovers. That's not gonna cut it, man. That's not gonna cut it. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to the next play here. <laughs> so the um the play you're about to see right now is uh. Curry throwing just he just throws the ball into the court. It's not even a like a fast pass or anything. It just somehow winds up in Kevin Durant's hands, and uh, of course Kevin Durant just blows right by. I think that's um I'm not sure who, who's guarding him in that, but um I know that Durant just blows right by. And this is this became a common theme in Game One was Kevin Durant was getting easy easy drives to the hoop, like just straight to through the lane. Nobody was there, and why were they able to do that? In my opinion, this is the Cavs' first time playing against Golden State Warriors' Kevin Durant. They played Oklahoma City Kevin Durant. Golden State Warriors' Kevin Durant is not the same Kevin Durant as Oklahoma City Kevin Durant. And they got to figure it out or else Durant's going to just... He's just going to steamroll, help, help the Warriors steamroll over the Cavs. And then something like this happens. The ball just goes in there and it what up oh, what happened to him? Well and Durant throws it down. Picked up by McGee and Curry. 
So let me uh, get the next play ready. But you see what I mean, right? Like, I don't know, just nobody's paying attention to Kevin Durant. And like, that's a huge mistake. Okay, so this was this was a good play that I wish they added more emphasis on because this play went by so fast. The camera couldn't even cut to it, like, to catch the full play. Basically, this is JaVale McGee doing a ridiculous, like, some sort of 180 dunk or something. And, like, makes it look so easy. And some people are saying that uh, JaVale may be... He's he's maybe the other X factor in all this because remember that one game he had in the playoffs where he had like uh, 15 points and like 15 rebounds or something ridiculous like that, and this is from a guy who who is not an All Star. Um, I don't think he was ever voted for the All Star team, and you know he's become a mockery on Shaq and the Fool, and uh, obviously uh, the press was all over that. But just watch this dunk. Just watch this dunk. LeBron James versus Kevin Durant. So that was that that uh, crazy uh, one-handed 180 dunk he just did. So now um, this is this is probably the most important play I think that um, I'm trying to emphasize my point with. So so Kevin Durant is on the fast break in transition and he's going down and Curry is open, which normally would be the right move to make defensively, but. This isn't this isn't like like Draymond running down about to do a layup that he may miss, especially the number of layups he misses. But um, they're gonna focus on Curry and Durant and Curry sell it. Durant makes eye contact with Curry like he's about to pass it. So that's why the Cavs reacted the way they were gonna react. Like, I don't know if the Warriors planned this out. If they were going to be like, okay, you can't double team Curry and you can't double team Durant at the same time. So, they got to figure something out. Either they got to play strictly man to man, position to position, or they got to figure something out because it should not be this easy. Right there, there was the fake. There was the fake right there. That's, that's all I'm saying, guys. That's all I'm saying. Okay, now we're going to watch uh, this play. I forget which one this is, but let's watch it. Do I need to say anything else? Is there anything else I need to say than what just happened right there? I don't know what's going on. Like, I guess... Is is Mike Brown a better coach than Tyron Lue? In terms of experience, maybe. And you gotta keep in mind that Ty, uh, that uh, Mike Woods, I think that's his name, Mike 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 Brown. I uh, know Mike Brown. I think I don't know whoever the acting coach for the Golden State is. He used to be the coach for uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the head coach. So that was a different team completely back then. But do the Cavs have certain? trends they like to do sort of like how the Warriors do with the three-pointers maybe but um he knows he knows how LeBron plays because he brought him to the finals and they lost but it's still pretty good I don't know just to even make a finals appearance you you have a one out of tw one out of 30 chance of making the finals because there's 30 teams and like with that many teams I understand like you know there's a lot of under 500 teams like you know more Almost half of them are under 500, but going to the finals is an accomplishment no matter how many teams there are. Even back in the day when there were only like 10 teams in the NBA, when the NBA first started, even that was not as easy. So now we're going to pull up the next play here. Let's see what this one is. Um, I think I know what this one is. Job of going straight up. Durant, Curry for three. Bang! So you, you see what just happened on that play. What just happened was that Durant, they they were starting to pick up on Durant's you know drives and stuff. They say, okay, we can't we can't keep letting this guy go straight to the hoop. So what they do, they put more, they stand in his way, they put more pressure on him. But what happens? They leave Curry open, and he's like the last guy you want to leave open. I mean, like 
I don't understand why they're not taking defense off Clay and going doing the double teams on the guys that matter right now. Not that Clay Thompson doesn't matter right now, but I mean, like, can't if if you ran the numbers in terms of how often Clay Thompson is open versus how many shots he'll take and make. Of course, if, if it's wide open, of course he'll make this. He'll make more of them than he'll miss. But the problem is. He's not doing that right now, so capitalize on his shooting slump. I don't understand what's going on. Just don't guard him, because guard him lackadaisically. Guard him like that. Don't guard him 100%, but if you can if you can get away with the double team, do the double team. Because if if Clay Thompson is, that, is the only guy open, what are, what are Clay's options if he doesn't want to you know, risk taking a bad shot because there were times in this game I, I didn't pull up the plays but where where clay passed on the um on the shot and passed it to whoever was making the shots and in some cases kevin durant there's i i'm not sure if i pull that play up but yeah um there there was a play where clay thompson just he just passed he had a wide open shot he passed it to kevin durant who's like not a hundred percent wide open but he was still in good position and what happened kevin durant knocked it down so like it wasn't like Clay had like ten assists or anything, but like if he's, I think, I think it, it's gotten inside his head. Like he needs to, uh, he needs to start doing things offensively that will compensate for him not being able to score. And I think that's passing. That's maybe he could work a little bit better on the rebounds maybe I understand he's not that tall but then again why does Steph Curry have so many rebounds for such a six foot three point guard I don't know I don't know but um okay let's let's uh look at the next play now let me just pull this out okay now this is I forgot that this was the play I was talking about this was the play where um where uh Clay passes up the shot and feeds it to Durant Okay, like I understand my preparation for this video is very ghetto, but um, yeah. So what happened there? You know, the attention was focused on on a uh, Curry, and he passed it to a wide open Durant, Durant who wasn't being guarded. So they're just are they just gonna seesaw between this and take advantage of the Cavs like this? If that's what it takes to win an NBA championship. And I think that's what they should do. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, I have no coaching experience in terms of basketball. And, like, you know, like, like I've never coached a game. But, like, how do you find an answer for this? How? I mean, like, like Tristan Thompson, like, he, he, uh, he wasn't playing at his best. Um, I just, uh, I don't know. Like, I understand the Cavs have you know, pretty good defense, but I feel like they, I would probably say, Le, with the exception of LeBron, probably Kevin Love or J.R. Smith are the best defenders on um, on the Cleveland Cavaliers, but can Tristan Thompson, like, besides blocks, can, can he really, like, like, change the tra trajectory of a shot? I don't know, like, He's he's clearly too slow to guard Curry, so Curry blew past him multiple times during this game. But I don't know. Let's take a look at the uh, last play, and um, I just thought this play was funny. But um, I think I would like to point out that I believe Matt Barnes only played in the fourth quarter, and basically you know off the bench. And um, as far as I know, I only saw him take one shot, and he made it. So I'm just saying Matt Barnes is shooting 100% for this game, for this series right now. I'm just saying, like, shooting 100% right now. Matt Barnes, Derek Fisher. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, if, I was, if I was going to say Warriors fan, I wouldn't say Derek Fisher, though. He's such a weird shot, too. Yeah. So, um, that was that. Uh... Yeah, I definitely, I definitely had to take, I had to take a break and be like, you know, let me just process this. You know, I watch, you know, probably ninety nine percent of the game except when um, I think I got a phone call or something and uh, I was distracted. But um, I 
I've seen the highlights. I've seen the analyses. <sighs> I don't know. Like, obviously, you know, it's not too much concern because this is only game one. But my prediction, you know, on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Tony could have been, was that uh, the Warriors are going to sweep. They're going to sweep the Cavs. That was my prediction. And so far, they only need three more wins in a row to do that. And uh, they will go down as the first team to ever go 16-0 in the entire playoffs, including the finals. I don't think that's that far-fetched, considering that the Cavaliers almost went 12-0 to to, on their way to the finals. That almost happened. Uh, can you allow... For the Cavs to sleep and like fuck up one game against the Warriors. Against Boston, that's different. Because they didn't have Isaiah Thomas. Obviously, he was injured. And he was out for the rest of the regular se- uh, postseason. But um, that, that hiccup, that game they lost against Boston, that shouldn't have happened. I understand it was a close game and Seth has got lucky in a lot of respects. But... Y- you can't do that in the in the NBA Finals. You could do that in the playoffs. In the Conference Finals, maybe not either. But in the playoffs, you can get away with, you know, hiccuping one game. But in the NBA Finals, you really want to be down 2 nothing against, against a team that almost had 70 wins again this season? And they have Kevin Durant? It's almost not fair. Well, please like and subscribe, guys. Let me know what you think. But, um... This... I feel bad for the Cavs. I I have... Tyron Lou needs to do some... Magic. In terms of... Changing the defense. The offense, for the most part, the offense was fine. They still scored 90 points. I mean, like... You know, they did lose by 21, but they still reached 90 points. So, like... The offense is there. It's just not there when it counts because the defense was just so bad. I don't know, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Tony could have been. Stay frosty.